to start the agenda review session for Wednesday, June 15, 2016. We have public hearings. You can see heating ordinances on second reading 602 in order to grant a canopy easement within the Plum Street right of way to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital for the 10 Plum Street canopy project. Resolutions. 642, approve agenda amendment. amendment. 643, approve payroll. 644, authorized refund and redeem tax sale certificate. 645, approve ABC liquor license renewals. 646, approve request of division of alcoholic beverage control. To act on renewal of plenary retail consumption license. For the funds and lives, 324 Elks. License number 1214-330-23001, period July 1, 2016 to June 30, 2017. 647, authorized joint application execution and acceptance of a grant for 2016 with three other Middlesex County municipalities, U.S. Department of Justice, for 2016 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program. 648, disposition of charges against Livingston Liquors, 2 Elizabeth Street, liquor license number 1214-440460005. 649, disposition of charges against Cancun Bar, 120 Fetch Street, liquor license number 1214-330830007. 650, disposition of charges against Kazmax Incorporated, trading as JJ Tavern, 732 Lounge, 186 Alton Street, liquor license number 1214-330340003. 651, authorized property lien for board up security. Location 268 Somerset Street, block 97, block 27, the amount is 194.35. 652, authorized property lien for board up security. Location 218 Townsend Street, block 160, block 32, the amount is 3,549.48. 653, authorized property lien for board up security. Location 173 Delavan Street, block 218, block 9.01, the amount is 3,566. 654, approved amendment resolution R. 051651 to pay additional legal fees in the amount of 1,145.75 for Mitzner and Mitzner. Police Officer Andrew Weiss in the matter of Rodriguez versus Police Officer Andrew Weiss from 27,234.30 to 28,380.05. 655 approved request for Mississippi City property requested by McKinley Community School and the Brunswick Board of Education. Those locations Alice Jennings Archibald Park. From McKinley Community School Field Day, the date Friday, June 10, 2016, rain date Friday, June 17, 2016. Time is 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., not pro tone. 656, approved request for use city property, request by the Department of Recreation, project tomorrow. Locations, Feaster Park and Alex Baker Park. For simple via additional activities for residents, date Saturday, June 25, 2016, time 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 657, approved amendment resolution R021620. Specify few locations at Bewell Park, approved request for use of city property, requested by New Brunswick Department of Recreation, New Brunswick Day of Fun, location, Memorial Stadium, date Friday, June 17, 2016, rain date Friday, June 24, 2016, time 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Location, Bewell Park, large field and two side fields, block off upper part of George Street and by Waco Street to avoid traffic driving through the park. Date, Saturday, June 18, 2016. Rain date, Saturday, June 25, 2016. Time is 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 658, approval amendment resolution R081540. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of 1056.50 to Benedict and Altman. For Detective Brant Gregus in the matter of Dietrich Stolen for City of New London from 2584 to 3640 .50. 659, approved member resolution R 051606. Approved PY 2016 cons cons consolidated, can't say that word, consolidated, consolidated, that's a big one for me. Action plan for CDPG and own funding. CDPG PY 26 allocation 836808. Home PY 26 allocation 366855. 660, approved member resolution R 021632. Reason, correction to award number and amount, authorization application, execution and acceptance of grant. The State of New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety for Emergency Management Agency Assistance application for funding for fiscal year 2015, grant $7,000. In kind match, $7,008.74. 661, approved request for use of property requested by McKinley Community School New Brunswick Board of Education. Location, Dallas James Archer Park, 8th grade picnic. Date, Tuesday, 20, June 21st, 2016. Time 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. 
662, approve request use of city property request by City of Kappa Sorority. Location, Google Park Jockey Dance Pavilion for Awareness Walk for the Alzheimer's Association. Date, Sunday, September 25th, 2016. Time, parking use is 7 a.m. 3 p.m. Pavilion use is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. 663, approve request for, for street clothes requested by NJ Skate Shop Incorporated. Location, White Park Street between Stone Street and Barton Street for skateboarding jam and demonstrations in conjunction with Go Skateboarding Day 2016. Date, Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. Time is 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Police extra duty. 664, approval of member resolution R051657. To pay additional legal fees in the amount of $1,419.50. To Benedict and Alba for the police director and the Caputo, Caputo in the matter of Victor Rodriguez for the city of New Brunswick from $22,958.50 to $24,378. 665, approved purchase by the police department under state contract. A, 89851, Rashad Shee International Corporation, annual software support and maintenance for the police department, 12 month period commencing January 1, 2016, and ending December 31st, 2016. Not to exceed 673110, not pro tough. 666, approved purchase by warning utility under state contract A, 89850, software license and related service, M 0003, from Bell Park and LP. Purchase software for the water utility, water treatment plant, not to exceed 1289.50. 667, approved chapter 159 budget concerns. State of New Jersey, Department of Law and Public Safety. For safe and secure community, the amount of $60,000. 668, approved chapter 159 budget concerns. State of New Jersey, human services for dial line grant, amount 56,315. 669, approved chapter 159 budget concerns. Department of Environmental <coughs> Protection, Green Acres Program. For New Brunswick Landing, <coughs> about 67,760.70, approve a word of contract with Vermeer North Atlantic Sales and Service, aka RJ Sherman Associates, for one Vermeer stump cutter for the Division of Parks and Shade Tree, not to exceed 32,067. The National Joint Powers Alliance Cooperative Parks Purchasing Program, 671, approve a word of contract with Central Jersey Coalition, doing business as Elizabeth Truck Center. For auto body repair for one vehicle for the water utility, not to exceed 5,675.38, the Winters County Cooperative Purchasing Program, CK12 Middlesex, 672, authorized payment for emergency procurement of water utility. For installation of a fire hydrant along ramp H, Route 1 and Route 18, with Anzalini and DiCecchio, Di incorporated, not to exceed 13,282.50, purchase order number. D88164. <coughs> 673, approval of resolution R11948, which reason to authorize execution of third addendum to power purchase agreement with NBS Energy Partners LLC for solar panels. 674, authorized execution of, of a participation agreement and conservation, and conservation restriction agreement with the County of Middlesex in connection with the County of Middlesex grant of property known as Block 130. Lots 9.02, 10.01, and 11.02, Welton Street. 675, group purchase of the Division of Parks and Shade Tree under the state contract A89851, software license and related service from She Shy International Corporate Purchase Software for the Division of Parks and Shade Tree. That to exceed 5,442.52. 676, approved member resolution R121559, change order number three with Joe May Contracting Corporation, Pump Street Sanitary Store and Roadway Improvement. Specification number 886-15, the map 4,908.48. Approval of this change order and the aggregate for the prior change orders will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 677, approved member resolution R061676, change order number one. With Joe Med Contracting Corporation, Plum Street Sanitary Store and Roadway Group. Specification number 886.15, amount of 16,852.50. Approval of this change order in the aggregate with prior change orders will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 658, approval of order contract with Jesco Incorporated, one bomb bag loader for the Department of Public Works, not to exceed 31,1055 in Middlesex Regional Educational Services. 679, approved authorization for a pilot agreement for the Zebra Waste Supporter Beach Housing Project to defray the cost of municipal services. 680, advise and consent to Parks and Gardens Commission report. The name Jonathan Gonzalez. Expires December 31st, 2017. Two year. Six eighty one approved request for use of city property requested by George Dawson, Chairman of the Historical Association. Location, Boyd Park. From memorialization of George Washington's American Army's 1778 FEU de Jou, de Jou, I'm sorry, from Luna, 
celebratory rifle salute and second anniversary of congressional approval of the Declaration of Independence. Date, Sunday, July 3rd, 2016. Rate date, Sunday, July 10th, 2016. Time is 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. 682, approved member resolution R021618. Demanding rain date, Sunday, July 10th, 2016. Approved request from the city property request by the Brunswick Recreation Department. Boyd Park Independence Day celebration, Sunday, July 3rd, 2016. Rain date, July 10th, 2016. Time 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Police after duty. 683, approved relaxation of the city noise ordinance requested by Joe Bank Construction Corporation. Final payment of Plum Street, date Saturday, June 11, 2016, time 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Not for a 684, approval resolution R061533, page order number one, with final lease contract with incorporated for reconstruction of Recreation Park. Specification number 851.14R, now 48,093.13. Approval of this change will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 685, approved chapter 159, Buzz and Jersey. Saving Jersey Office of the Attorney General for clipping or ticket grant, and that is 5,000. 686, authorized purchase by the lease department under state contract A81319 for Land Capital Incorporated, purchase of 170 weapons, not to exceed 46,930. 687, authorized approval of the sweepstakes offer with the Brother City Market for Restaurant Week 2016 through the month of July 2016. 688, approved rejection of bids and authorization to re-advertise for Memorial Stadium Grand, Grand, Grandstand, kind of thing, right? Grandstand. Grandstand. Grandstand and renovation and waterproof, specification number 915. 689, approved member of resolution R021684, change order number two, with Black Rock Enterprises LLC for Handy Street Storm Store improvements. Specification number 8215, the amount is $12,701.50. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 690, approved order contract with All Colors Incorporated, All Colors LLC. <coughs> First, and deliver t-shirts, term is 12 month period, commencing June 18, 2016, and ending June 17, 2017. Rebid specification number 51016PR, not to exceed 10,281.09. 691, approved salary increases for management personnel, effective July 1st, 2016. 692, approved member resolution R051677 to add additional dates. Approved with access to the city board zone requested by Jason Ford, Sun Trucking and Rigging. Region is currently to our WJ Cancer Center located at 195 Old Street. Date Saturday, June 25, 2016. Alternate date Saturday, July 9, 2016. Time 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. 693, approved <coughs> temporary release of performance and material labor bond. The solar bioelectrical contract is appropriate for Lewis Street and Apple Street traffic signal improvement project. The amount is 409 585 694, authorized approval of sweepstakes laws for the New Brunswick City Market for survey participation. Enter for a chance to win and gift certificates from local business. 695, authorized tax budget to transfer overpayments on several tax and utility accounts. 696, authorized refund due to tax court judgment on Block 710.02.006.0619, State Route 18. 697, authorized refund to Rouse Associates against Block 50, Lot 1, 245 Hamilton Street, against taxes paid in error. So you got Okay, we're going to start the meeting with the clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Anderson? Here. Council Member Escobar is absent. Council Vice President Fleming? Here. Council Member Garlotti? Present. Council President Egan? Here. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been complied with and satisfied and that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick, has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we'll have a moment of silence for our men and women serving in our armed forces, for our men and women serving in our armed forces uh, that lost their lives in battle, and for the people who lost their lives in Orlando. We have minutes from May 4th, 2016. Can I get approval for the minutes, please? So moved. Second. Roll call. Council Member Anderson? Yes. 
Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We're now going to move into the public hearings uh, portion of our meeting. Uh, that will be with our TAP and ABC reports. Uh, I'm going to ask the city attorney to uh, take us to that direction. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Council President, members of council, the first item agendized uh, this evening, this afternoon, I should say, is the matter involving Livingston Liquors, uh, liquor license number 1214-44-04605. Um, this particular licensee is represented by council. Um, I will note that Mr. Gilbert is here on behalf of the licensee as well as the principals of the licensee. Um, charges were proffered against this uh, particular establishment by the New Brunswick Police Department, um, ABC Special Investigations Unit for a uh, one count of underage sales um, that occurred back on February 4, 2016. I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Gilbert um, relative to this matter. Um, we have a proposed resolution for council's consideration and hopefully approval this evening. Uh, whereby the licensee will plead no contest to that particular charge, agree to a uh, seven-day suspension of their liquor license, um, and at the same time, the city will consent to an application by the licensee to the director of the ABC to reduce the, uh, the suspension to a monetary fine. Um, having um, placed the proposal we offer on the record, I just ask that Mr. Gilbert Acknowledge that that's uh, the proposed resolution on behalf of this Yes, indeed. To identify yourself. Uh, Stephen Gilbert appearing for Livingston uh, Liquors. Thank you. Okay, and you're, I've heard everything council read and uh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Um, if the council is so inclined, I would just uh, uh, have them indicate so. There's a proposed resolution in the packet on the consent agenda which would memorialize this resolution and permit uh, me and Mr. Uh, Gilbert to enter into a written stipulation of settlement in that regard. Can we, can we do that by motion? Do that by motion. We do it now at this point? We can do it on consent agenda, but if there's any questions or concerns, okay. we'd like to Does anybody have any from the council have any questions or anything for Mr. Schiavi or anybody else in the party? Then we'll, then we'll move it to the consent agenda. That's correct. Okay. Right. And then we'll move it to the, the second one. Please. Right. The second one involves um, an establishment by the name of Cancun Bar. Uh, liquor license 12-14-33-083-007. Um, also with respect to this particular licensee, they are represented uh, by council. Council is here, um, Mr. Arejo. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with council uh, relative to this matter. Um, similarly, this particular matter uh, rises out of charges brought by the New Brunswick Police Department Special ABC Division. Uh, regarding an underage sale, um, as well as a uh, um, well, it's, a, it's more of a regulation violation. Um, the count, uh, the three count complaint. I've had an opportunity to speak with counsel about relative to this particular matter. Um, Mr. Rejo, on behalf of the licensee, um, has agreed behalf of this client to enter into a consent order as well, whereby the licensee in this particular matter uh, would plead no contest to the charges, uh, would accept a 15-day suspension uh, of its liquor license, again with the City of New Brunswick um, not uh, objecting to an application to the director of the ABC uh, to have this reduced to a monetary fine. Um, as the council is aware from prior matters, the law does not provide the city of New Brunswick or any other municipality to collect fines against licensees, liquor license establishments for violations of ABC regulation. Uh, that is something that's reserved just for the ABC. The state the state state. That. Right, exactly. And again, with respect to this particular matter, um, the, the, uh, the fact that this particular licensee hasn't been before this council these types of violations, um, I am recommending to the council that uh, you move this resolution. Council, are council, you here, sir? For the record, Erwin Rujo with the law firm of Marshall's Robin and Little Rock. I've read the uh, moral rendition by council, and we so agree. And I have signed a stipulation of settlement on behalf of the company. She actually came today, too, and she's aware of, of the proposal for the Thank board. Thank you. Does anybody from the council have any questions on this particular licensee? 
Okay. That, we'll that also move to agenda as that. Right, that would be on the consent agenda okay. as well. There's a resolution in the uh, packet okay. appropriately prepared. Number three. Um, number three involves Casmats Inc. trading as JJ Tavern or what's known as 732 Lounge. Um, liquor license 12-14-33-034-003. Um, that particular license establishment is represented by Mr. Sika. Mr. Sika, if you're here, if you could please acknowledge uh, your presence, sir. Paul Sika, so a fair enough to have a cash message. Thank you. Um, as the council probably recalls, this particular licensee was before the council a few months back relative to um, some violations brought by the New Brunswick Police Department Special ABC uh, Division. Uh, we had worked out a consent order. Um, unfortunately, this licensee finds itself back before this council um, with a uh, complaint that's been filed by the New Brunswick Police Department Special ABC section containing 22 counts of violations of uh, ABC regulations. Um, Council and I have discussed the matter extensively. Um, we have exchanged discovery as the law so requires. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, um, we're unable to resolve the matter without a hearing. At least at this time, we, it looks like we can't resolve it without a full-blown hearing. I estimate the hearing on this matter will take maybe three to four hours. Um, I know the council has other business this evening. Um, we have to line up a lot of witnesses. I spoke to Mr. Sika about the logistics of having a hearing um, at a future date. Um, and I would propose, um, since we're short on time tonight, or we have a full agenda, as you can see, that we adjourn this particular matter. Uh, I would like to do it on the 20th of July. Um, what I would suggest, perhaps, is the council to indulge us start an hour early at 4.30, start the hearing, get as far as we can, go into your regular business, and then continue. <coughs> um, we have a couple other matters on, liquor license matters on the 20th. Um, it will be a long evening. I apologize for that, especially if we can't work it out with the licensee here. Um, but having said that, I would uh, ask Mr. Sika to add whatever else I haven't. Uh, That's an accurate representation of Discussions we've had in the position we're at at this point. So, so you, you, just, you haven't got, you, there's no agreement. You guys have to come up to it. You have 22 counts, am I correct? You yes. Like to count. 22 I, I just, we, TK and I discussed a global settlement. Um, I uh, offered to sit with him to resolve uh, undisputed counts so we can pare this down only to those uh, which are disputed okay. and potentially shortened. Well, we're going to give you to the 20th of July. Hopefully, you guys can get together. You know, uh, lawyers are good at making a deal, side deal <coughs> agreements. Hopefully, you guys can uh, come to something where we don't have uh, three hours of testimony and everything that we can get to a, uh, a fair resolution. Understood. Fair. Okay. Do our best. Get that done. Everybody else seems to be getting that. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, having uh, said that, Mr. Egan, I assume the council then would be agreeable to carrying the matter to the 20th. Uh, there is a resolution uh, regarding disposition of charges on your agenda marked as 550. Uh, that will be amended to reflect uh, that the resolution will actually carry the matter to 430 on July 20th. It's a Wednesday afternoon. And if Mr. Seek uh, and I we can plan to meet between now and then. Okay. And work it out. I'll so advise the council. Maybe does anybody from the council have any questions on that? Any problems with that? With coming in an hour early if need be to, for the hearing? 4.30 for next meeting? Okay. And we'll also, that, that we'll, we'll also adopt the data. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, council. Thank you. Number uh, four. Right. Number four is a matter involving the continuation of special conditions on the licensee. Um, by the name of Platinum Lounge LLC trading as Perlay and Glove. Uh, as the council, I'm sure, will recall, uh, this particular licensee has special conditions placed upon it. And at the time of renewal of that particular license, the law also requires that we advertise that we are going to reimpose the special conditions on the renewal of this license. Um, 
number one, so the licensee has an opportunity to be heard, and any member of the public have an opportunity to be heard uh, relative to those special conditions. Um, I will read the special conditions as quickly as I can, uh, just so they're on the record. Uh, but I will represent to the council, I have spoken with uh, Mr. Pissarro, or communicated with Mr. Pissarro through email. Um, he represents Platinum Lounge. He has no objection to the reimposition of these special conditions. He unfortunately is traveling and unable to attend tonight's, tonight's hearing. So, so he's agreed to the same term. You'd Correct. Like to, you'd like to read them again? I, I don't need to read them, but I do need to announce that if anyone's here from the public who wants to speak, relative yes. to special conditions. Um, Is there anybody who would like to speak on the public, on the conditions of Platinum Lounge? Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Charles Craddeville, mm -hmm. Brunswick, New Brunswick today. Um, can I hear what they are? Sure. sure. The licensee shall limit its maximum occupancy to license premises to a total of 399 persons. Number two, the licensee will cease the practice of conducting two nights or 18 to enter 21 to drink events. Three, the licensee shall comply with New Jersey state statutes, New Jersey ABC regulations, and local city of New Brunswick ordinances regarding advertisements and promotions relative to events at the licensed premises. Four, the licensee acknowledges that the New Brunswick Police Department and or New Brunswick Fire Department are permitted to and will conduct periodic inspections of the licensed premises at the respective department's sole discretion, and the licensee shall comply with all respects of the or requests of the respective department during such inspection. Five, the licensee shall not allow, permit, or suffer in and about the licensed premises the consumption of alcohol or beverages by persons under the legal age to so consume. And six, the conditions placed upon the license shall continue at the annual renewal of saying, and the licensee hereby consents to increase the within conditions. Subject to modification or removal, a part or all by the city council, the city of New Brunswick, at the city council's sole discretion. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. So the police department is recommending the reimposition. The licensee is not objecting to the reimposition of these special conditions. And um, now is the time for anyone who wanted to comment regarding the special conditions. Yes. Okay, so I just want to understand procedurally, there's no hearings for the ABC charges for the other items that you went through. There's been no opportunity for the public. To, to speak about that? Are you on Platinum Lounge speaking about that? No, I mean the first three. Why is there a hearing for this one, but the first three there weren't hearings? Like you left the public out of the hearing. There was a hearing uh, set for today. The hearing was not necessary as a result of resolution with the council for the licensees. Those particular matters aren't on for renewal. This is a renewal hearing, as with any renewal or liquor license, anyone can stand up and object or talk about the license establishment. That's not what uh, the hearing is for, the charges. It's between the licensee and the city council. Okay, it's just it's a little confusing. It's listed under <laughs> public hearing, so I, was, I just assumed that the public would be uh, part of it. But um, I, I guess uh, the, the only issue with, with, uh, with these conditions is are any of them changing or is it no. the exact same that's been there? Exact same. Exact same. Okay, and so then my question would be if the police department thinks there's a problem there, um, why aren't they pushing for uh, something different than what the staff is I don't think they think there's a problem. I think, I think the conditions that they have on the place have been working out and they, they've been doing quite well. I don't know if somebody that's exactly that. why the special conditions are being used. Special so conditions are there and it's been working out quite well according to the tavern report. Okay, I mean, uh, I just recall a shooting less than a year ago, right, or maybe a little more than a year ago now. Um, and, uh, you know, just think, you know, especially in light of what happened over the weekend, we need to make sure that people are safe in these places. And uh, 399 people is a lot of people to, to cram into a place and give them liquor. And, uh, I mean, I, I just, uh, I don't know if the status quo is, is um, what's in order here, but I don't, I don't freak with that place, so I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, I'd like to see the council be a little more uh, proactive here and like, for instance, ask what the conditions are and, you know, uh, what the, you know, maybe. What the conditions are in the book that we have, Mr. O'Reilly. Okay. Okay, well maybe you could ask the police then what the, what the, the recent uh, history is with the place. Is that what you'd like to do? Yeah, that's, what, that, that's, that's what gives us the report. Yeah. Anybody like to comment on the platinum lounge, please? 
Captain or uh, <coughs> Detective? Detective Groff. Detective Groff. Special Officer here. Yes. Uh, I know. He, I didn't prepare him to bring him up. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's documentation, but he could uh, talk about any things that he may be calling regarding the prior race this year. Yeah. In the prior license year, it was the Detective Groff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, nine of those were related to disturbances over disorderly persons complaints. Uh, beyond that specifics, I don't have much more for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. President, yes, no. I don't know if any of you remember the barber was that shooting outside of the point. Yes. It was not in the establishment. The shooting was outside. Is that right? Mr. Crabble was referred to Mr. Anderson. That, that's correct. That, that occurred outside. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have any comments on the Perlay uh, continuation of conditions? Mr. Jim? Yeah, seeing that there's none, um, we'll close the hearing at the time um, of renewal of this particular license. It's not necessary that we then have a hearing on the special conditions. Obviously, as I indicated, if there's anyone at the time of adoption of a resolution as public comment, they can always make it. Thank you, Mr. Shearer. Number five. Next item, number five. Um, is the uh, Kelly's Corner, uh, trading as Kelly's Corner, uh, liquor license 12-14-33-028-006. Uh, this particular license has been renewed uh, several years running with three special conditions. They include the licensee shall not alter the premises from the layout shown in the sketch plan, previously furnished by licensee and approved by city council by resolution R-061306 and on file with the city clerk without first obtaining further approval of the city council. Uh, there shall be no live music or live entertainment provided, uh, that this shall not preclude the playing of the jukebox or the television set. And lastly, the above license is granted uh, subject to compliance at zero, uh, ordinance, I'm sorry, um, zero dash zero two nine six zero nine as amended relative to educational requirements for managers, uh, which is a requirement for the license establishment is actually now. Um, this particular uh, licensee um, has not uh, objected to my knowledge. Uh, I don't know if anyone is here on behalf of Kelly's Corner. Anybody here on behalf of Kelly's Corner? But if anyone from the public. Anybody from the public like to comment on this particular uh, continuation? Liquor license? Kelly's Corner, any public comment? <coughs> In light of not uh, that particular licensee, that will be renewed with those special conditions on the final renewal application. Um, lastly, uh, we have continuation, termination of special conditions for La Famosa Inc. Trading as La Famosa. Liquor license 12-14-33-045-003. The special conditions that um, are sought to be reimposed and have been in place for several years now um, are as follows. Licensee shall control loitering in the adjacent area to the licensed premises by posting signs and or calling for police assistance. <coughs> Licensee shall provide distinctive attire for security personnel, which identifies their status as security personnel. Licensee shall maintain a video camera on the exterior licensed premises and shall edit <coughs> a film for time and date and maintain said tapes for at least 15 days. Licensee shall not alter the premises from the layout shown on the sketch plan previously filed with the city clerk without first obtaining the approval by city council by resolution. And lastly, the licensee shall be in compliance with ordinance 0 029609 as amended relative to educational requirements for owners and managers. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak to the principal um, of this particular establishment and he has no objection uh, to the reimposition of these special conditions upon renewal for the 16-17 license. <coughs> Is anybody here representing La Famosa this evening? Any representation? Would anybody from the public like to comment on these special conditions renewal for La, La, La Famosa? Anybody from the public? Say down, Mr. Shea. Okay. Um, similarly, we will uh, um, have this particular license renewed with the special conditions. At the time um, that it's submitted for renewal, um, at which time will be on the consent agenda with the opportunity again for the public to comment. Uh, that concludes the ABC matters for this evening. Thank you, to Council, for uh, your patience and indulgence. Council is here. Uh,
and obviously we've, um, since the leaves and that have been completed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have ordinances on second reading, 602. An ordinance to grant a canopy easement within the Plum Street right of way to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital for the 10th Plum Street Canopy Project. Would anybody from the public like to comment on this particular ordinance? Anybody from the public on this particular ordinance? Mm -hmm. Seeing none? Move to the ordinance. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. We have resolutions this evening, 642 to 697. Would anybody like to comment on any particular resolutions this evening? Anybody on the resolutions? Yes, sir. Good evening once again. I'm Charles Pratt of Little Brunswick. I'll try to be quick. Um, the one I'm really interested in is the, the purchase of the weapons. Well, that's towards the end, uh, 170 weapons. Can you tell me, uh, yes, uh, 686, can you tell me what, uh, what's the breakdown of these weapons, 170? Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that the police handgun, the cabinet, can you tell us what these weapons are, please? It's to replace all of the side arms that the officers carry today. Um, our uh, current side arms are approaching 11 years old. The uh, expected lifespan is 10 years for a police firearm. And uh, they're just they're wearing out. It's just going to replace um, it's a similar model, uh, similar make, some the exact same caliber. It's almost the same gun. Just replace all the uh, so who, who makes the guns? Uh, we're still looking into it, but uh, right now we have make those that are made in America. The six hour guess yes. uh, made in America, and that's what we're looking to uh, replace. Them. Okay, can you just tell me a little bit about any of the safety features for the guns? Do you know any of the characteristics of the, of the, of the gun, the safety features, or anything that you can talk, talk about? Cabinet, uh, there's double action, uh, which requires um, a full trigger pull. Uh, trigger pull. Um, the hammer is not cocked without having a full trigger pull. Uh, cocked hammer. Similar to the guns we have now and the guns we have now. And what is going to be done with the old weapons? What happens to the old weapons, Captain? The old weapons are traded in, we're given uh, money for them. Um, they're not disposed of. They go back to six hour, and um, a portion of the money goes back is applied to the new bill for the new purchasing of the new weapons. Yes. Okay. So, will the department be trading in 170 weapons? We'll be trading in. I think we have 160 right now. Um, we'll be trading in all the weapons we have now. All the all the all the uh, sidearms. Yes. All the sidearms. Okay. And uh, can you tell me over the years? Have any of these weapons been lost? Have any of the weapons been lost? Yes, lost or stolen. I do not know. And I have to check. I mean, I'm not going to. I wouldn't. Mr. Crowley, I can't say for sure. You're taking a situation where buying handguns and place new handguns, update our handguns. Now you're taking it to a whole different. If you're asking avenue, obviously, for some reason that we're not prepared to answer at this time. I can say that. If you're asking why we're returning 160, I said that's the exact number, but uh, that's what we have now. I don't know if or what we, our department has grown, so we get, have to have a few extra in case like, there's a shooting or a gun breaks. So we are buying more than we traditionally bought in the last time. That's right. why so there's 140 some officers, 145, I think. So you're getting extra. That's what you said. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, I am concerned that. We're not able to say for sure if any of the guns have been lost. I, I can't say today. I can yeah. report back in the next meeting. I'm not going to comment on something I'm not you say, sure of. We're not prepared to answer that. You're taking it into a whole different direction. When you're not it there wasn't a question. We'll, find, the we'll find that answer out for you for the next meeting. Okay. Okay. I'd, I'd be very, very curious to know if, uh, uh, you know, okay. the service weapons have been stolen or lost. Uh, I want to speak about, uh, I guess it's going to be 650 is the uh, hearing for cast mass, and I know that uh, you already dismissed the council, but I think you made a poor decision by scheduling this hearing for 4.30 p.m. Um, as you know, one of the council members, Ms. Escobar, had said she can't make it to these meetings until 5.30. That's why they're at 5.30 in the summer instead of 5. So now while she's absent, You've moved up the start time of your July 20th meeting to, I guess, accommodate 
the, the bar that has 22 counts against it. Um, and I don't think that's fair to Ms. Escobar. Uh, and uh, fair to the people who voted. We'll let her know that you're carrying that. What else? Would, I mean, would you consider changing the time to 5.30? So that she can, is, is she okay? Is she, are you not expecting her to be here? Okay, I just, just doesn't seem. Well, how do you? How, well, let me ask you a question. Since you, how do you know that somebody hasn't spoken to her already and asked her if that was okay with her? Do you know that? I don't know. Do you? Well, apparently not. But you, apparently not. What? You, did that happen or not? I mean, because that's. Cause, I mean, this was a suggestion from the city attorney, and I'm saying it was that it was a, a bad suggestion. You shouldn't have made that decision. Thank you. Her. Thank you for your um, comment. Sunny day, it, uh, you know, when you 
some energy was produced. On a cloudy day, it wasn't, but um, we don't really, um, those flat screens have uh, since uh, failed us, and we haven't really um, looked at it in a while. Okay, but it is Well, we do get a monthly bill from the solar company because they are, you know, obviously producing power for us. We buy it um, cheaper than uh, PSHG would provide it to us for. So, I mean, uh, I think uh, an evaluation of the total energy produced can be, uh, I can go back and look at the file and bring that information to the next meeting. Okay, interesting. And the uh, uh, last question would be, how? what's the duration of the agreement? I know we're leasing the panel for the, the cities to keep. I don't remember. It's, it's generally speaking long term, but I don't remember the exact uh, uh, the exact term. It is true that we do not own the panels. We allow them to be uh, installed on our property. NBS Energy also? Um, I believe that is the uh, entity, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments on resolutions? Anybody on the resolutions? Mr. Meeting, yes. before you uh, take a motion on consent agenda, I just want to read um, 5 0 from you, which will carry the past semester. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Yeah, please do. Um, my municipal council, whereas the notice of, notice of charges have been filed against Cat's Mass Inc., trading is JJ Tavern, Lounge 732, the holder of plenary retail consumption license 1214330340003, in the city of New Brunswick, dated April 12, 2016, which alleges violations of the New Jersey Administrative Code and New Jersey statutes. Whereas city council, by resolution R 061609, Set June 15, 2016 at 5.30 p.m. for hearing on said charges. Whereas on June 15, 2016 at 5.30 p.m., Hasmas Inc., trading as JJ Tavern, Lounge 732, appeared with Council Paul Sika to respond to said charges. And uh, whereas Council for the Licensee, along with the City Attorney of the City of New Brunswick, has requested that the hearing be carried to July 20, 2016 at 4.30 p.m. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Brunswick that the hearing in the matter of Cass Mass Inc. trading in JJ Tavern slash Lounge 732 be uh, set for July 20, 2016 at 4.30 p.m. We have further resolved certified copies of the resolution be provided to the City Clerk, City Administrator, City Attorney, Director of Police, Detective Ryan McGraw, Paul Sika Esquire, and Cass Mass Inc. Thank you. Thank you. I get a motion on a resolution. So moved. Second. Council Member Anderson. Work state on 684. Yes. So noted. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. Now move to the public portion of the meeting. Anybody would like to address the City Council? Please step up to the microphone. Five minutes to come on up. Introduce yourself. Right up. Motion one. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Steve Ostergren. I uh, said a couple things before we actually come to a council meeting, so I'm here. Uh, if the council would consider uh, enacting an ordinance and perhaps amending with an existing one. Uh, I'm a, not a resident of the town, but I'm a business owner and a property owner. I just love to get rid of these. I have to collect literally hundreds and hundreds of these through my properties. I consider them litter. The housing uh, officers consider them litter and debris on my property, which I get ticketed for. They're not addressed to anybody, but they're just thrown on steps, trip and fall hazard, porches, front yards, driveways. I just got these four from one property today. One down in my snowblower once. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a company called CBA. They're in Elmwood Park. Yeah, they're not addressed to anybody. In my opinion, they're just simply littering. If I walk down the street through red solar cups around every street I walk down, I'd probably be ticketed. These people are doing it, and I don't know if they have a license or they're allowed to by somebody or a permit, but I'd love to see it go away. Steve Ostergren. Actually, Mr. Eagan, members of council, this is a problem that um, the city attorney's office has been dealing with before I became the city attorney. We 
get complaints all the time about this. I'm very familiar with uh, this company. I've corresponded with them. I've dealt with their counsel. Unfortunately, um, they're legally able to do that. Okay, They're able to distribute these packets. Um, we have an ordinance that talks about that they have to be bound properly so it doesn't become um, debris. Then putting in those bags, uh, unfortunately, under some case law from North Jersey, is sufficient for purposes of binding. Yes, exactly. What, what I will tell you, and I told many residents, is there's a 1-800 number, which I tested myself in works, because all my neighbors get them, but I don't. And I'm waiting for the day that I do get one, because once I do, you know what the response is, is that you can go and file a summons against them in municipal court. Um, they are annoying. I know that it's not wanted for a lot of, uh, a lot of our residents. Unfortunately, uh, it's legal, and it's a difficult battle uh, to stop that type of thing. Do you have the 800 um, number? Uh, not, not on me. I have it in my file. Oh, it's right on the bag. So I called them on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was giving them several property addresses, and the girl who answered the phone, her response was, I don't think I, don't think I can do all of this. And I said, do I need to hang up and call back nine more times individually? <laughs> individually and then, then we can do it, or we can make it simpler for both of us. And she's like, well, I just can't promise anything about this. Uh, well, that was the response I got. And I said, what company is this? Is she CBA? CBA no, yes, so I think everybody and feels the same way you do. And if there was something we could do about the stock, we would. So uh, I, 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 mean, I don't understand how it's lit. If it's bound, it's not litter, but it's still debris. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna ticket me for it if I don't, I don't pick it up. Why am I responsible for four to 500 times a year having to remove those from my properties? Well, the, the, the case law okay. seems to say that you have the ability to opt out. It's like the do not call list, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's like uh, hitting that thing on the, you know, you know take you off the list. Well, well, I call, so I sympathize with you, sir. I, you know, but it does work, and I've tested it at a couple other properties, some, some neighbors, and, and uh, it, it it has worked, and I'm waiting for the day that they slip up, but they have. You know, right. at least I called my house. Right. And then my next question would be to amend an existing ordinance. As a, uh, as a landlord uh, over in the 5th and 6th Ward in the college area, uh, I'm subject to Mr. Weaver and Mr. Dixon's and all those guys' tickets, which I have no problem with. Uh, I spoke to uh, Charlie just the other day in court for one of my properties, and I said, my tenants deserve it. Give me the hammer, whatever they get, because they're, I've told them, I've told them, I've told them, I've told them. My issue is that you have to realize it's a college town with the transient student population, which turns over probably almost every year, maximum usually two years. It's all new people. And I know, I understand the ordinance, it goes to the property address, not the tenants. I understand that. My issue is when I have a bunch of sloppy tenants that got their fourth or fifth ticket during their tenancy, I'm getting the hammer when I go down to court. And Justifiably so, no complaint, make the fines higher, I don't care. Uh, I'd love to have a written schedule of them also, but my issue is that they move out. June 1st, I get some nice new tenants in. They might be 19, their first time living off campus. They're not really aware. I give them a garbage amendum to my lease after speaking with Maria Cody upstairs one time. I added that in to try to educate them. They just don't know the rules. They put their garbage out on the wrong day. They should get a $65 ticket. I take a picture of it. I text that into the group text to my tenants. Try to go through that education process with them at that point. The problem is, it never really resets. So my crappy tenants that finally graduated and moved out, I have my great new tenants that we want to welcome to New Brunswick off campus, part of the college experience. I got to explain to Allie's dad why I have a $500 fine plus $33 court costs. They just moved in 10 days ago. This happened last year. And it was Allie's dad. I'm like, well, it's the new Brunswick. Use. My daughter's been living there for 10 days. She put the garbage out in the wrong day. Why is she getting a $500 fine? And my only question is if the council would consider amending the existing ordinance to provide an annual reset. If my tenants get three, four, five, six fines in a year, hammer them. I don't care. But if it's there's new people, it, it's not their, it's, it's my house's six fine, but it might be my second or third set of tenants at that property. And they're getting hammered for the sins people before them. And I don't think that's fair, that's all. And I, I, can, I have no problem we'll take a look analyzing at the people that deserve it. We'll take a look into that. Maybe there's something formal that we can design where 
you notify us that you have new tenants in there. So happy, happy to do that. You can do it. We can take it. We'll, we'll, we'll have the city attorney's office take a look at it. Yeah, happy to do that. Again, you guys have my, my stuff at rent control, at okay. parking. You have my leases. I'll provide tenants' names, whatever. Okay. There's one. Thank you. Thank you. We'll look into that. We'll check on this. President, I think yes. uh, when your father was here, and he tried to do something about that way back, you know, when they were uh, happy to be sitting in the thing. Right. And again, unfortunately, the law can't yeah. My question is going to be pretty easy. Uh, What's your name, sir? Brendan Brito. How you doing, guys? I'm good. I'm a student. I'm a student at Middlesex College, yeah. and I'm a military veteran as well. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask a couple questions about your city council. Uh, all the members of your city council elected or appointed? Elected. Elected. Uh, what do you do in the event in the event of a tie, like on a vote? Does that happen? Even? This is my first meeting. I'm sorry. Good boy. It's a push, yeah. Uh, you lose the big money on that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it doesn't get adopted. You have to have the majority. You have to have. Um, you talking about a tie? We're, we're voting in session here, or we're about in the in session? Yes, yeah, so, uh, it gets. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Denied. Denied. It's, uh, it doesn't win. You have to have a majority. Okay. Uh, What do your meetings typically consist of? Like, what does a typical meeting consist of you doing? Well, our meetings are the first and third Wednesday of every month. They consist of adopting resolutions and ordinances governing the city of New Brunswick. So if you want to use the jogging path in Bugalow Park to have an event or the pavilion or any particular park or anything like that, you supply us with the paperwork, the correct documentation, and the insurance, and we'll put it on our agenda. If we see it's uh, everything's legal, we'll we, we adopt things like that here at the city council and budgets for the city. If you, want, there you, if you want, you can meet after with Mr. Anderson. You can, you can, you can <laughs> history I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, what are the individual responsibilities of each council person? Like besides the, the meetings here, do you have any other responsibilities? Well, each of us are a liaison to a particular form of the government branch of the, of the city of Brunswick. Like I'm the liaison to the parking authority. Uh, Mr. Anderson is the liaison to the equipment. Human resources, who's board of City market. Okay. So you just see on for different departments within yes. the city. Okay. Uh, do you guys follow any set of rules or guidelines such as a constitution? <coughs> of course. Do you have a constitution for the town? No. It's the one that's the same one that everybody else follows. And the state. And the state. And Robert's rules of order. And you won't get it from both sides. Okay. Uh, how long can someone serve on the city council? As long as they get elected. There's no term limits for city council in Brunswick or or the position of mayor in the city of Brunswick. No term limits. There's no term limits. Okay. You're probably one of the best reporters we've had here in a long time. <laughs> Thank God you showed up. Precise and, and right questions. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to tell me about your council and what you guys do? Well, like I said, why don't you wait after the meeting? And one of these gentlemen, I think, I'll, I'll be signing stuff. You can certainly walk these guys, or Mrs. Barlotti, or whoever. I'm not going to leave anybody out. But we'll certainly be glad to talk to you after the meeting and we'll give you a little more information. Okay. All right? Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good luck in school. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening once again, members of the council. I, I wanted to say uh, for all these businesses that are subscribing uh, you know, to this service, 
Um, there's a, a much better way to get their message out. They can advertise the New Brunswick today, and we're happy to, happy to put inserts in our newspaper. We don't want them to be littered because we want people to read them. And so, um, uh, you know, we're uh, we, we are the community newspaper here. I just wanted to spread the word that uh, you know we're happy to uh, include all voices. Uh, we just uh, just did a nice story today about. Uh, Mr. Laughlin being uh, recognized by Ms. Moore a couple of meetings ago, and so you know we are um, uh, we, we want to showcase all the good things going on in New Brunswick uh, as well as the things that need a, a light shining sure. on our problem. So um, yeah, just wanted to to uh, say that. I know everybody probably wants to, to get going home, so uh, uh, that, that's all I have for today. But I, I hope people keep reading New Brunswick today. We have a new issue coming out this week, and uh, the offer is still on the table for any elected officials. If you want to have a, a you know. A, piece that you wrote, a column, or some some kind of uh, uh, message that you want to get out there, uh, you know, the, the, the offers on the table, we'll run that for you. We'll, we're also always willing to, to run advertising for any local businesses that uh, want to reach all of New Brunswick. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Step up, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. George Dawson, the city historian, public one place in Brunswick. Uh, thank you for approval of the Port de Wall program on July 3rd. This is an event we've been having to some extent for a number of years. This Buffalo Park last year, we decided to try it in Boyd Park this year uh, at the request of, at the suggestion of, of a member of the uh, city market board. Of course, it's a larger facility and it's Actually, I have seating there because that Buffalo Park we had kind of bring for New York City. Uh, this is uh, will precede the City of Fireworks event, but it's not a lead-in to the City of Fireworks. It's an independent event. It's, uh, a, uh, it celebrates a salute to the American Army, which was brought to New Brunswick following the Battle of Monmouth in 1778, and. Uh, General Washington ordered a four-dollar salute because of their performance on the battlefield, which they held. Uh, and it, it just happened to be on the 4th of July, 1778. He didn't intend to be in the Brunswick on that day. He just happened to be here. And sometimes it's uh, recognized as the first, first official celebration of the 4th of July, because it was the second anniversary of the Crush Approval the Declaration. But it is, a, in effect, a military a Declaration of Independence, and Washington wanted the uh, world to know that the Army was now uh, winning the battle for independence, and uh, he thought it might occur fairly soon. It didn't occur for another uh, uh, six years, as it happened, uh, but uh, uh, this uh, is an event which happened in New Brunswick at uh, national significance. Uh, and uh, we're trying to bring in people uh, to visit the city to uh, see this see this event. It's educational, it's uh, historic, and uh, uh, everybody should come. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Thank you. If we get to play Hamilton to be welcome. Hamilton is there too. He was there too. All right. Anybody else uh, like to comment this evening? Anybody in the public comment section? Anybody else? Seeing none. Yes, but, um, this Saturday, I don't know if I saw the record rolls of blood. Uh, Woken Pioneers um, celebrate Juneteenth, which is a commemoration of when the slaves were first free, well, when they found out they were free. Um, the celebration is this Saturday, starts at 11 a.m. It's from 11 to 4, and it's a parade first, starting on Rimson Avenue, all the way to Pine Street Park. Uh, we just want to invite everybody, members of the council, everybody who can be there. Um, I'm not sure the weather, regardless of the weather, it's going to be a nice day. But it's the first celebration that we've had in New Brunswick. And if many people can make it, we just want to invite everybody out. I don't see Director Rose, I'm not sure. He was here. Yeah, he was here. We're going to mark it that he left early. If I missed anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Start of Vince Nat and Snow Ball at the Pine Street Park. Thank you very much. It's going to be a celebration. It's not just a parade, it's going to be a um, whole bunch of events going on at the Pine Street Park. Thank you very much. Uh, just, 
Just a, a just a little point. Pine Street Park oh, is not open. Yet. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's still under construction, but city, I, we've closed the street now, right? right? Yes. 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 Okay. And Pine, for anybody know, Pine Street Park is also known as Recreation Park. Right. Yes, sir. You have a question? Uh, I guess I should speak. This is about Recreation Park. I'm Chris Naranko from NJ Skate Shop, uh, skateboard store at 160 East and Ave. Uh, we were hoping to do an event this coming Tuesday at Recreation Park. It's not complete. We're hoping to do a, uh, an event with uh, bands, this skateboard shoe company, next month uh, at Recreation Park if it's done, hopefully. I don't know if it's going to be completed, but uh, I'm on the list today for approval for um, closing Wyckoff for two hours yeah. on Tuesday. And we approve that. And I just wanted to come and say thanks to everybody in advance. We were at 29 Easton for nine years. Uh, recently got run out of there because of the heroin problem on our street. Um, and we're now at 160 Easton, and uh, I just want to thank you all in advance for working with me. You're going to be able to go to paperwork in for the park, right? You're getting that Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's one point we're working on the uh, right now the uh, grand opening uh, or the official opening of the park. It is likely to be uh, very late in July, um, but when it is open, only the hardscape portion of the park will be open. The, the turf needs two growing seasons to. Uh, succeed. Okay. Um, so the grassy areas of the field of, of that park are going to be fenced off okay. for um, probably another six months or so. But the hardscape will be open, right. uh, which which includes the uh, skateboard park, the water feature, uh, some of the gardens and things like that. I think it will still be a very um, meaningful thing to reopen the park. But the, the turf areas are going to be off limits for another six months. And we're going to have signs. We're going to have, we're going to have fencing up and some type of signage. We're um, it'll most likely yes. Okay, uh, it'll probably be a change order to the existing contract, but uh, that's not being okay. for you yet. But yes, there'll be some sort of fence and uh, signage and um, other means of trying to discourage people. And whenever the grand opening is decided upon, uh, there's a lot of local skateboarding professionals. Any way I could help with that, lend a hand. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you know Mr. Yeah. Lockman is a professional skateboarder? I can tell. He's my living. So we'll be out there with the stick. Big fans. Big fans. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I tried it for two months in the 60s. <laughs> Anybody else for public comment this evening? Anybody else? Yes, sir. You want, you want to go twice? Can I use it like my last 30 seconds or 45 seconds? There? 28 seconds. Go. 28 seconds. Go ahead. Uh, just following up on him, like, obviously he said 29 Eastern Avenue, to run out of business for a heroin problem on the street. I'm around the corner, and to be mindful of the larger problem of, of homelessness in New Brunswick and otherwise, I'm gonna say there's a vagrancy issue up there in that area. I'm sure everybody's aware of it. I've spoken to the police about it. The police said our hands are tied. We can't do anything. I spoke to Kevin Jones. He said we're working on an ordinance. If there's anything the city can do, I'd love to see some walking police presence maybe, as opposed to guys just driving down in the car and going through, but when people are following people into businesses, you know, with kids with families that literally had a cup of coffee thrown at a family from Thomas Sweets. I'm in the street holding down the guy for 12 minutes till the police came for shoplifting. When people see these things occurring in the street, they don't want to come back. It's really become a non-family friendly area in that section of the city. I know there's the U.S. Constitution. I know there's the protected forms of free speech. I know the loitering rules have been repealed and a lot of, you know, the police, their hands are tied. I know I've heard it from them many times and they're frustrated as well but as a business owner i'm not sure what's going to happen somebody's going to be in the hospital whether it's me or somebody in the street and i don't know if that's what's going to take to really get some action up there but well it's, I, it's I a problem. Have, well, police presence walking the beat is not a bad idea when we do that there seems to be less even when we put that big precinct truck out there it's always a good thing it, it, it prevents people from doing the wrong thing it's it's daily yeah. I mean, there's, it's I every day i got a guy you know laying down on, on people's stoops and everywhere and, i guess I know. It's, right. it's, it's, we'll certainly I'm not sure what we'll certainly do. look into that and have the police look into that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Motion. Second. Thank you. Motion. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes.